All right, this is Frank Sinitas here with Groove Cart updates for July of 2022. We're going to go over what's been fixed related to bugs and then what's been improved and then what's been added. So any of these that I'm going to read off right now, I'm not going to show you any demos or anything related to this. Just know if you've had any issues with these things that I go over in the past, they've been updated. We always encourage you to go back, check and test your store and give any feedback if you run across anything. Our developers are always working hard to make sure the platform is running smoothly for you. So let's just dive right in, okay? I'm going to read these, and then at the bottom, we're going to go over some exciting new things with the platform, and I'm going to demo some of that, all right? So first of all, we fixed a bug when you copied an element. So in other words, when you made an exact copy of an element and you tried to drag it, there was, uh, there was an error there that's been fixed. Also, free users cannot add their debit card or credit card to pay transaction fees. So just know when you make sales as a free member, there is a transaction fee. So if you've made any sales in the past, those invoices are going to be generated and you have to pay those fees. Okay, so that's the beautiful thing about GrooveCard is you can get started for free and only pay if you make sales. Now, we also had a uh, issue with the test mode. When you turned on test mode, you couldn't disable it after that, but that's been fixed. Okay. Also, when you're updating headers, it would say updating header number six, and you're actually updating header number five. Those success messages have been fixed, okay? Next, the developers fixed an issue with full width, boxed elements and rows. They weren't reflected properly on the store. That's been fixed. So if you had your store uh, all of a sudden show things that were super wide and before you had them right in the middle, that's been fixed, okay? You might just have to go back and reset that element. Okay, and then they fixed the centering quantity element on Apple devices. So there was a, a thing on Apple where the quantity, if you adjust it, arrow up, it wasn't centered. That's been fixed. And then the developers fixed a text element where the size and font family was not reflecting what you'd set up on the stores. Okay, and then we were getting some errors on the category page when some users were trying to upload WebP images. That's been fixed, but also right now we've uh, temporarily restricted the uploading of WebP for right now. So for now, until they fix that issue, when you upload WebP, it gives you an error. That's going to be turned off for now. Also, uh, for video elements, there was an issue with the dimensions. It wasn't uh, matching exactly what you would set in the visual builder. That's been fixed. Next, we removed some extra text that was showing up when someone would have COD set up. That's been removed and now it matches. So if you need to add any extra text, you can just go into the visual builder, click on pages and edit the thank you page. Also, there was no header for the guest tracking page. So it wasn't uniform to the store. That's been added. Next, when it came to the countdown timers, there were some users that were experiencing whatever they would set there. It wouldn't match it on the store when they'd update the store. That's been fixed now. The next bug that was fixed was related to the differences in font weight setup. So if you made it medium or bold, things like that, it wasn't reflecting on the store's page. Now remember, we just updated the visual builder recently. So a lot of these bugs came up once we updated. So thank you for letting us know. And anything you run across, let us know. And we'll keep on fixing those. The next bug that was fixed was related to mobile devices and padding. When you'd edit the padding on the builder, it wasn't shown properly on the actual mobile device. That's been fixed. And the last bug that was fixed, this was actually pretty unique. Uh, when you change the variant on a product page, the prices were changing to match that variant on the related products. It wasn't on all stores, but this was found and we did get that fixed. Okay, so now let's get to the exciting stuff. What's been improved? Your slider, your carousel, and testimonial elements now have title tags as an option, H1 through H6. So if you add titles to the testimonial or carousel or slider, you can now have those title tag settings that are in there before you could just edit it with the little WYSIWYG editor. And now those are in there. Okay. Now what's been added. This is exciting. We have two new themes. Okay. Two new themes have been added. Let me show you where to find them. Let me go into uh, our demo store and let's go to the builder and let me just show you where to find those themes. So once inside of the builder, just click on themes and then go to basic and you will now see groove fashion and groove pets okay so remember before you start working with other themes if you've already started doing work on your store i always recommend that you save your current theme so how would you do that you go to my themes save as theme and then name it or something so you know this is what you had in the beginning before you start loading other themes all right that's exciting go in there check it out so thanks again to our design team for setting up these two new themes to be used in groove cart Groove Fashion and Groove Pets. All right, let's go back here. We now have private access 
to the store through groups. Now let me explain what that means. So how would you use this? Now, most users are not gonna have to worry about this. Most users are not gonna need this. So let's just say I create certain products and I wanna sell wholesale to other people that are gonna put those in their stores or whatever, and I don't want the public to be able to buy. I just want wholesalers that I do business with to buy for me and the public can't see the pricing and things like that. So I wanna make my store private except for people that I approve. So let me show you where this would be used, okay? First of all, let's go to settings and then go to store information. And let's just say you wanted to make your store private and you only wanted to allow customers, okay? Let's just do that. So here, we now have under store access and store information, enable private access. And then if you wanted to, only customers could see it, right? Now, this doesn't make sense because the only way for someone to become a customer is for them to see your store. So this doesn't make sense. We would have to add a new group. So where do you do that? Well, I'm gonna jump back to this in just a second. So what you would do is you would go to orders and then customers. And then here you would make a new group. So let's just say manage customer groups up here at the top. Now here in this section, as you can see, GrooveCard has three default customer groups. One is visitor, right? And anyone and everybody, okay? They're not logged in, they haven't made an account. A guest is someone who's bought from you, but they didn't make a, an account on your store. And then customer is anyone who created the account on the store, okay? So let's just say we wanted to add a new group and these are, let's say, wholesale buyers. Okay, so we just call this wholesale customers. Okay, and then hit save. Now you've made that group, you can say, okay, I want to close the store off to be only to wholesale customers. So what would you do? You'd go here, you go to store information, and then go to store access enable private access and I only want wholesale customers to see my products and purchase so I'm going to enable registration okay and I'm just going to put this right here and I'll do a full training on this later I just want to show you title description save okay and now if I refresh my store so we refresh and as you can see there I put title and then I put description so here you could explain things like that and here they could register. And at that point, you can go here, go to customers. And now we see these customers in our test store. And let's just say I wanted to make this person here a approved wholesale buyer. So I'll go like this and then I'll hit save. And once I save, now that customer will be able to access your store. Okay. So again, this will be handled under orders, customers, and then you make a new group here. And then you go to settings, store information, and then you go to store access, and then you would set it up here. I'm going to have a full training on how to do this later, so don't worry about it. This is just a quick update. Next, and the one that I'm excited about the most is product settings simplification, okay? Setting up your product is now more streamlined and awesome. So let me show you. Go to my products. Everything's still there, but it's now more streamlined, and it can help you get up and running faster. So if I go to set up a new product, voila, we now have a new setup for you when you're editing the product, okay? To get launched, you really just need your information, the price and variance, and then publish. Everything else is optional. So with this new improvement, all the settings are still there, but it's now simplified and it'll help you get up and running faster. And everything that's optional has been pushed down to the bottom. So if you don't want to add it in the beginning, you can still launch a product. So what we've done here is simplified the process. I'm going to do a training on this in a separate video. With that being said, thank you for being part of the Groove family. We hope you enjoyed these updates. Go through if you experience any of these bugs personally, go through and check them and test them. And then let us know if you run into any issues. Thanks again for watching. This is Frank Salinas. We'll see you on the next video.